Thank you. Ells with us now. And while quarterbacks will dominate most of the conversation leading up to the draft, don't sleep on the talent inside the top 10 that could change the game on the outside. Yeah, last year's draft, and you know this, was sort of dubbed the best receiving class in the history of the world. <laughs> yes. uh, but this year's candidates are no slouches either. So today, our draft experts talk targets. You know, if 2020 taught us anything, it's the power in using your voice. Student athletes in particular use their platforms and clout to advocate for change. Players like Mississippi State football player Kylan Hill, who successfully sparked the state to remove the Confederate emblem from their flag. And at the University of Texas, many athletes insisted the school do away with its alma mater, the Eyes of Texas, for its alleged racist origins. Debate ensued about the song's future, and an Eyes of Texas history committee was formed. And then today, that committee decided that the song was not created with a racial intent. For more, here's John Barr. It's such a big weekend in college hoops. We go back there and the Pac-12 semis underway in Las Vegas. We're going to get started with Oregon State's LaFonso Ellis joins us now. So Oklahoma State's yeah. Mike Boynton <laughs> said after the win yes. that Cunningham is the best player in mm -hmm. all of the land. I know you love the true freshman and I know you love a couple of those pieces yes. around him. So lay out the scenario. Um, he's got a couple guys inside outside that helps carry the offensive load. This is a very dangerous Oklahoma State team and I wouldn't be at all surprised if they got to a Final Four, especially because of the way they mix their defenses and keeps offenses off balance. A Final Four team, Fon yes, says. So there. file that like away. They, they colors, certainly, the what would you say? I like your Notre Dame colors. Oh, colors. yeah, just for you. <laughs> just for Come you, on. my friend. All right, uh, LaFonso, thanks so much. Can't wait to see you all day on College Game Day. Coming up, Addison is the one and only Jeremy Fowler. This probably feels good to get out of the house. Absolutely. All right, <laughs> So uh, Cam Newton is back with the Patriots. I know they loved him in the locker room. The feeling was mutual. This is obviously not starting quarterback money. Right. What are their plans at quarterback now? Well, their plan with Newton is now they have a fallback. Positive regarding him. Well, I think that's they're, interesting. Right. I think they're looking at upgrades, mm -hmm. but he's the fallback. They feel like they can still win with him if they have to. So, but with New England, all options still on the table in my mind. Man, you let the guy go. You got to bring him back. Okay, that would be interesting to see him come full circle. Let's talk about the Bucks because now they have some money to play with, right? And they have plenty of places to spend it. What are they thinking? So they're going to try to bring. And that leaves a lot of other names floating out there, right? Like Indomic and Sue and yeah. AB and Len Leonard Fournette, so who knows, still some decisions to make uh, for the Super Bowl champs. Jeremy, yeah. great to see yeah, you live me. and in the Feels studio. good. Feels good. Jay? What? Go be a forward. More guaranteed money, Fonz. You know that. Now, we won't see Blake Griffin make his Nets debut uh, tonight against the Knicks because he's already been ruled out with injury management as he undergoes a ramp up in activity, which is understandable considering he's in sort of idling since February 12th. But if there's one thing people have been asking since signing with Brooklyn, besides will he ever dunk again, of course, is how he impacts the chemistry on a team that's just starting to really find it. Malika Andrews talks expectations ahead of Blake's new start. In just the last few weeks, there have been several incidents in the world of basketball involving hate speech and racially charged language. Two weeks ago, Creighton coach Greg McDermott was suspended after telling his team, quote, I need everybody to stay on the plantation. And then last week on a Twitch live stream, Miami Heat Center, Myers Leonard could be heard uttering an anti-Semitic epithet. And finally, last Thursday in Oklahoma, a local broadcaster used more desp despicable language while calling a girls' high school game. Days later, that team from Norman High School went on to win the state championship. Here's Jeremy Schaap. To baseball we go. He won two pennants and a World Series title as Houston's manager, and then it all came crashing down. A.J. Hinch spent last year watching baseball away from the dugout, suspended the entire season in the aftermath of the Astros sign-stealing scandal. Now he's in Detroit with a second chance and looking to rebuild his reputation and fittingly return to relevance a team that spent the last four years around the bottom of the American League. Armani Rivera sat down with Hinch. And even as so much work remains to be done, the pace of progress is accelerating. So Sarah Thomas is one of those disruptors. Six years ago, she became the first full-time female official in the NFL, while more recently accomplishing another historical feat. For more, here's former Vanderbilt place kicker Sarah Fuller, a pioneer in her own right. And uh, Marcus Spears, <laughs> hi. <laughs> Listen, this is, the first What's time up, e? this is the first time that we've heard from Carson, right, since he was traded last month. What stood out to you based on what you heard at that press conference? 
I like that he in between offensive coordinator and quarterback that works, not the one that we saw with Adam Gase and Jay Cutler in Miami. Didn't work so well. Marcus Spears, so many more questions hey, to be. <laughs> I, what? I don't start with me. I just, I'm using an example. I'm contextualizing. We'll have a lot more on the quarterbacks okay, coming up. You're okay. the petty one, not me. Right? And that's all that matters. Seth Greenberg is joining us here. But at the same time, like, what do you make of the fact that they fell into a huge hole and had to climb back to beat? Well, you got to give Colgate some credit. Colgate okay. spreads you out. They do a great job with their offense. Right? Now, look, Texas Tech had four guys scoring double figures. That's okay. used. They haven't done as consistently uh, the pace of the game. Arkansas, the pace of the game, how quickly they play, how quickly they hit the ball in front, contain the basketball off the bounce, and then close out to shooters. I like this Arkansas team. I think they're undervalued. They had to come back against Colgate, who, after jumping out to a huge lead, now has a bad taste in their mouth. Oh, oh she's, Kevin, a, she's a wordsmith. Kevin, she really didn't do that. Colgate she didn't use that. I'm with you. I'm, I'm done with, with that kind of set, stuff. Set, I'm set, I'm set Don't brush me off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Just oh. like literally last week, I was like, Dallin, we got to get you on the show. And alas, here is Dallin Cup. She we, gets stuff done. You, it, it wasn't me at all, but I'll take the credit <laughs> for that. Uh, we've been breaking down all of the games, Dallin. But when you step back, give me your biggest takeaway from today so far. Well, it's today. I'm going to mix in last night, too. All right. The Big Ten, 50 ball, they outworked the Buckeyes. It was an impressive performance. They deserved to win that game. They won at the free throw line. How about the Golden Eagles? It's just like whatever. But if, not we haven't been, if we haven't been burned by the Bucks when it comes to football, <laughs> now we are with basketball. You got too. seven teams left. That's, and that's true. We obviously had a really good day, but I want to look at some interesting uh, matchups that we've got actually coming tonight as well because mm -hmm. we have a whole. A lot of folks liking the orange in this one. Okay, I picked Ohio State, full disclosure, but I also picked okay. Winthrop. So I'm hoping to recover a little bit if they take down Villanova. Dallin's going to be hanging out with us all day long. I get things done. More yeah. basketball, more down. things done. That's what I do. Welcome back to Sports Center. Since 2012, the United Nations has recognized today, March 21st, as World Down Syndrome Day. The date isn't by accident. Down syndrome occurs when there's a third copy of the 21st chromosome. Today is a day meant to encourage inclusion, awareness, advocacy, and education. And as Jim Wojciechowski shares in this SC featured, it is also a day to celebrate those who inspire us, such as 21-year-old Chris Nikic. Greenberg, LaFonso Ellis here with us to get us set for a busy, busy college hoops day. Now, Illinois and Loyola Chicago kick off the action today. So, Seth, what can the Ramblers do to cause problems? Well, it's their style of play. To me, the key to upset in the end. 16 appearance since 2005. Now, elsewhere in the Midwest region, we wow. got 11 seat Syracuse looking to continue its surprise run against old Big East foe West Virginia. So, Fonz, I'm going to start with you. How can the Orange pull off an upset? <laughs> like the dude, every time he yes. shoots it, you think it's going in. Yeah. Think yes. Duncan Robinson. I mean, yes. a guy is playing. I know. It's going to be a must-see. Syracuse yes. looking for its third Sweet 16 appearance in the last five tournaments. Fonz, Seth, not going anywhere. Back with us next hour to get you set for the South Region action. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Exactly 24 hours away from the deadline to franchise tag players. So you just saw him fist pumping there. Dak and Dallas, will they finally get a deal done? The clock is literally ticking, but don't hold your breath. These two sides have had no shortage of opportunities to come to terms in a long-term deal. So much so that ESPN's Cowboys reporter Todd Archer put together a list of all the deadlines that have passed, as well as the ones coming up this offseason. Let's run through it. The first one being the end of the 2019 season as Dak and the Cowboys had the entire 2019 offseason to reach an agreement. With that passing, the focus shifted to last year's franchise tag deadline, March 16th, which resulted in Dallas placing the tag on Prescott. Next up, July 15th of last summer, which came and went without a long-term deal, leaving Prescott to play on the 2020 season under the tag, which brings us to now, the franchise tag deadline, which is on schedule for tomorrow. It could be subject to change with the NFL and NFLPA still finalizing this year's salary cap. Looking ahead, the 2021 draft, April 29th, becomes the next deadline, followed by July 15th, the last day the two sides can reach a long-term agreement without Dak playing the 2021 season under the tag. Welcome to NFL Live. More on Dak in moments, including why someone here thinks tagging him is the worst thing you can do. Also, the Eagles are all in on Jalen Hurts, but should they be looking to 2022, especially with their draft position? Remember, they have the number six overall pick. You see it right there. We got Field Yates, Mina Kimes, Dan Orlovsky here today, and my friends. We begin with Dak, of course. Once again, closer and closer to the. <laughs>
And while Super Bowl 55 will be remembered for the Bucks' run to a championship and Tom Brady claiming his seventh Super Bowl title, it will also be known for making another kind of history as down judge Sarah Thomas became the first woman to officiate in the big game, breaking barriers and paving the way for many to follow. Vanderbilt kicker Sarah Fuller, a pioneer in her own right, has the story.